Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're gonna talk about kinds of roleplay characters. So a big part of roleplaying is creating the character. And you can go really simple into this, or you can go really in depth, but today we're gonna talk about a couple of the different kinds of characters that you might create. So before we get into those types of characters, there's two words that I wanna define, and it's mun and muse. This is gonna come up a little bit later when we talk about one of the kinds of characters, so I just wanna prepare you for the terms. So mun stands for mundane, and that is essentially you, or me, or whoever is doing the writing. And muse is the character. So when we talk about separating mun and muse, essentially what we're talking about is making sure that we understand that we are not our characters. So in most role play circles, what you're going to find is that mun and muse is separate. And that's a way to make sure that we're having the most fun and engaging and challenging experience when it comes to our role play. If you've ever had an experience where Mun and Muse got kind of conflicted and that caused some issues, leave me a comment down below, let me know. I could make a whole video on the different things that happen when your Mun and your Muse get confused. So let's get into characters. The first type of character that I was ever exposed to when it came to role playing was an OC, or an original character. So this is a character that you create completely on your own. It's something where you're not necessarily pulling from any sort of existing character, and that character is all in your own mind. You might go as far even to create the whole setting for them, or they might be in an existing setting. So for example, if I want to role play in the Fallout universe, but for whatever reason I'm not connecting with any of the Fallout characters, I might make a Fallout OC. And that OC is going to be designed for that universe, but they're not going to be present in that universe. So the character is all of my creation, but the setting is not. So you can go in lots of different ways when it comes to creating your OCs, and it can be anywhere on that spectrum. This is largely what you're doing when you're creating a character for a tabletop role-playing game. So when you're creating a character for Dungeons & Dragons, for example, you're really creating an OC for the setting that your DM has set out. Creating an OC can be really freeing because essentially what that means is that you are creating everything about that character and you're not necessarily beholden to anything else going on in anyone else's world or with anyone else's character. It's all you. But that also means that sometimes creating an OC can be a little bit more work than creating another kind of character, because you have to come up with everything in regard to that character. Nothing else is set out for you. You have to do your own research and your own creation process. OCs also have a bad rep in some circles because essentially you're free to do whatever. There's a lot of really common tropes that people use over and over and over again. So OCs interacting with OCs can feel kind of repetitive for some role players, and they end up getting this kind of bad rap when it comes to role playing circles. So if you tend to play OCs, that's something that you have to watch out for. Um, if you need tips on how to create a good OC or how to make sure that your OCs are engaging and that you're able to effectively role play without that stigma, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to make a whole video on tips and tricks for creating an OC. So the sort of counterpart to an OC is a canon character. So a canon character is already established. So for example, if you choose to play Snape in a Harry Potter role play, or if you choose to play Snow White in a Disney role play, you are playing a canon character. And that canon character, to some degree, is already going to have their history, their setting, their personality all laid out for you. So you would need to go into that canon and investigate that and learn about that character to be able to play them. Often for popular fandoms, in addition to the canon material that's available for the character, there might also be a lot of fanon material. So what I mean by that is things for that character that are generally accepted by the fandom about that character or it might be fan theories. So if we think, for example, in the Star Wars fandom, before The Last Jedi came out, if you decided to play Rey from Star Wars, then you needed to look into all of the different theories in regards to Rey's parentage. And you might want to even make a decision sometimes on which theory you believe is true, because it might come up for role plays. Because when we're talking about a role play, it's going to be exploring things that weren't necessarily explored in canon. So knowing what those theories are and knowing which ones you prefer or you agree with can be really helpful to playing a canon character. So another kind of character that you'll find in role play circles is the self-insert. The self-insert is the easiest character to set up because you're essentially playing yourself. So commonly you'll find these in fandoms where there are personas. So for example, in the furry fandom, people might role play as their persona, which is the furry representation of themselves. Or in the Steven Universe fandom, people might have a gemsona that they roleplay as, or anything like that. So when we're talking about 
self inserts. It might be like literally yourself, or it might be a persona, or it might be taking yourself and your personality and inserting it into a certain world. So you might have a self insert character that's like a student at Hogwarts. So you are role playing Harry Potter, but as yourself, if you were able to attend Hogwarts or something of that nature. So this can be a really fun and simple way to role play. It's really common. A lot of people do it, but it can have some major drawbacks. Because you're essentially playing yourself, it's really easy to get Mun and Muse confused. So you might be role playing with someone that really feels like the character is different than the person. But if you're playing a self insert, it might be really difficult to handle conflict that happens with that character. So say another character is mean to yours, it might feel like that person's being mean to you, even if the other person doesn't necessarily see it that way. They might see it as, oh, it's just my character. But if you're playing a self insert, you might see it as like, oh, that person doesn't like me. And that's not necessarily the case. So if you're playing a self insert, that's something to watch out for is to make sure that you aren't in the situation where you're getting the character and yourself confused because everyone might not see it that way. So your character may fall strictly into one of these categories. So you might be playing a straight up canon character, but they also kind of happen on a gradient. So for example, you might be playing a character that is technically a canon character, but they are so underdeveloped in canon that you had to spend a lot of time on them. So when you're playing minor canon characters, in a lot of ways, these characters are like OCs as well, because you have to put in a lot of the work and a lot of the development on that character because canon hasn't done it for you. Or you might be playing a straight up canon character, but the reason that you're playing them is because you really strongly relate to that character. So in that way, they are kind of a self insert, even though it's really a canon character. So what kinds of characters do you like to play? Do you like to play OCs? Do you like to play self inserts, canon characters, something in between? Personally, I really like to play those minor characters because I get to do a lot of the work on them, but there is also just a little bit there so that I don't have to deal with some of that stigma of OCs in certain role playing circles. So remember to like if you like this video, comment down below if you have any questions, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications. All of the links to my social media are down in the doobly doo. And thank you so much for watching. Make it a great day.